All right, this time starting from 3D buggy house and pillars where everything is all buggy. So like usual, I try to get everything down to the least number of components and still get a problem. This is unfortunately 19 whole polygons. And the issue is this little rhombus here is bleeding through, which is the bottom part of the shaft of the pillar. In order to debug this though, I need to know what the PIDs or the polygon IDs are of each of these polygons. And the PIDs are just declared in the order that they appear. Did you know that the bottom part of the pillar is called the base, the top part is the capital, and the middle part is the shaft? Lower pillar shaft bottom is the problem. And then the last thing that's declared is this wall right here. Right, the wall is 18. The problem polygon is number two. And so the problem is, after sorting, the quads to draw array has two somewhere before 18, which is wrong. And if two is already placed and we can't affect anything above where we are, then that means that two will always be above 18. But wait a minute, that doesn't make any sense because the mindis variable here for everything is wrong. That's the lower pillar's bottom base, and that's only 100 away from where we are. But how can that be only 100 away? That's like through the wall. So here's a 2D side view of the scene. And right now we're looking at this polygon right here. Now before MinDist was drawing the distance to the closest point. So we take the distance of this line. But last video I went over the limitations of that. Say you had some long polygon that went across you like this. If you were to draw a point from here or a point to here, then neither of those would be the minimum distance to that polygon. The minimum distance would be straight down. But that causes the problem in this case, because I'm taking the plane of this polygon, which extends all the way out to here. So when we draw it downward, we're getting this distance, which makes the polygon, which is way over here, appear like it's right here, seemingly much closer than it should be. So let's generalize this problem. There's a point P and there's a quadrilateral Q. Q is defined by four points, Q1 to Q4. And we want to know the shortest distance to any point of this polygon. I do have a solution to it because I've already done it, but it just seems really annoying and way too complicated, and I don't want to do that. It's existential dread time. Let's ask chat GDP to solve it for us. How do you find the minimum distance from a point P in 3D space to a polygon Q defined by four points Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4? Okay, define the edges. That makes sense. Calculate the normal vector. Determine if point P is inside or outside the polygon. I start getting confused when I hit this point down here. If point P is inside the polygon, then the minimum distance is zero? That's only true if it's coplanar. Let's have it turn this into JavaScript code. Wow, look at that. Isn't that neat? I don't even have to do anything or understand anything. Let's see if its function works. So let's give it our point and a polygon. The distance is zero. Uh, I don't know about that. Pretty sure the distance here is not zero. Yeah, and the distance from P to Q1 is about 297. I don't feel like trying to figure out why it's wrong. I just want to feel safe that AI hasn't replaced me yet. I mean, it looks like good code, even though it's wrong. Nicely defined variables. They're using constants and lets explaining what each function does and putting in helpful comments, making good use of helper functions. I mean, I guess it's easier to look good and be wrong. So yeah, I guess after compute plane coefficients, now I'm gonna be calculating the min distance. So I just dropped off what I had before in there, but I'm gonna be deleting this just so that, you know, we can make it more complicated. Okay there. In the end, I knew the solution all along. I just didn't wanna do it because I didn't wanna copy paste code which I, I did. Before I explain this though, let me just create a visualization. So imagine our polygon is this piece of paper on the floor of a room. And imagine that the player is this point that's above it. Now this situation is quite simple. You draw a line from the point to the plane, but let's think of the edges of the piece of paper as basically a bunch of walls that extend upward to infinity. And I'm drawing this kind of in 2D now, but you get something that looks like a tic-tac-toe board. So let's consider the point. If the point was in the center region, it's just point plane. But if it's over here, point plane no longer works. Instead, the closest point is the closest edge. And if it was in a corner region, the closest point is the closest vertex. So in essence, we have two tasks to do. First, we need to find which region the point is in. And then we use that case's specific method to get the distance. It feels weird because it feels like there should be just a simple formula you can plug in, 
but after asking ChatGPT and several valedictorians slash salutatorians, it doesn't seem like there's a simpler way. As a general overview what this is doing, this part right here finds which region the point is in, and these are all the different methods for finding the minimum distance for each case. So in this scenario, P is our player point, and we're only looking at one polygon, which is right here, A, B, C, D, and that polygon is for the front face of the pillar. So if we look at it straight on, you can see that we're to the side of the pillar, so the closest point is one of the edges, specifically the AB edge. But we, as humans, can see that pretty easily. But how does the computer know that? Well, first, plane coefficients is defining the polygon's plane. ABCD here is the polygon, but the polygon's plane is the rest of this blue region. And this is the formula for that plane. This for loop is for checking each of these edges. So the first thing we do is we get the first edge. That edge is this AB line right here. And at this point, I'm forming an edge wall variable, or in essence, boom, this thing. So this is a plane that's defined by two vectors, one of them being AB, and the other vector being a line that's at a right angle compared to the polygon's plane. This plane is perpendicular to the other plane, but it's also in line with the AB line. And this helps to form our regions. What we do now is we have to test to see is P on one side of the plane or is P on the other side of the plane? Well, I finally decided to functionize cross points, so I can go in that real quick, but it basically just returns the A, B, C, and D coefficients that would define a plane. So then we plug the player's X, Y, Z coordinates back into that planar equation, and we compare it to edge wall three, which is the D in this case. This comparison right here is checking, is this inside the edge or outside the edge? So the inside direction is toward the inside of the polygon. So to count as inside, P doesn't actually have to literally be inside the polygon. It could be over here, because we're only testing on this one plane. But if it was over here, it would count as inside. If it was over here, it would count on inside. But on this side of the plane, it's always outside. There's no place where it could be inside. So as a result, we get false because it's outside the plane. And then here, check type is just checking how many times a false comes up because how many falses there are changes which case we do later. And basically, yeah, then we repeat for the other edges. Here's the different planar equations for all the different edges. And you can see how it's forming sort of this giant tic-tac-toe board. For all the other lines, it actually ends up being inside, right? So the next thing we do is BC. And since the polygon's inside is underneath BC, that means that P ends up being true, so it's inside. And same thing with CD. The inside region is over here, so P is inside. And then AD down here. The region is above it for the inner region, and so is P, so that's inside. So when I get through all the edges, you'll see that we end up with false, true, true, true. There's one false, so we do case one, which is an edge. There are three separate cases. If P is inside, then it's always inside of the edges, so there's no falses and our case type ends up being zero. If it was in the corner, then it ends up being outside two, both the BC and the AB. Continuing with the case one, where it's closest to an edge, we now have to figure out the minimum distance from a point to a line segment. Luckily, I've already done that in the complicated section, but this whole section here is basically doing what I want to do. Now you do need to know which edge you're looking at specifically because some lines might be closer than where the line segment ends. And since one is the number of falses that we got earlier, we just have to look where the inside edge is false. In this case, it happens to be our zeroth index, so we just grab the two points for which that vector was formed. So closest line zero one is a line segment formed by these two points. In this case, this is where it's AB. And now I created this function, distance between point and line. Our point is XYZ, which is the player's position. And then the line is formed by the line segment of these two points that we just got. So let's jump into that function. And this code is pretty much verbatim applying this formula up here. So it goes through everything. It does some division. And you can see that the return value got back was 346.83. And as a sanity check, I can check that. I can check the distance or length by clicking on P and then clicking on about here. Uh, and it tells me that it's 346.83. Yeah, that's pretty exact. Does this actually fix the problem? Um, okay, yeah. So it's not doing the issue anymore for this specific case. And otherwise it's rendering fine. Let me just uncomment everything. I am scared about the roof because I just, I didn't think about whether triangles that would work for. 
What? No. Those are just poking right through the sky. Why are those poking right through the sky? Just, it's like the roof isn't there. Oh, I bet it's because the roof doesn't work. Okay, now that I think about it, my method is broken, not just for triangles, but for all non-rectangular quadrilaterals. Let's say we have a trapezoidal shaped polygon like this. It's shaped by these four black lines. Consider what would happen if the point was here. It thinks it's in a side region, so it'd think it'd be closest to a line, and thus it would find the minimum distance like this. Just going straight to the line, which is not part of the polygon. So that's wrong, it should be going to the vertex. Or consider what would happen if it was up here. This point thinks it's in the corner region, so it'll try to draw to the nearest vertex. But really, the polygon would be closer if it just drew straight down like this. So what I actually think I need to do, instead of extending the lines with the walls, the region lines will extend perpendicular to the line that we're considering. And that's how we form the different regions then. Because if the point is here, then it's closest to a vertex. It doesn't matter where it is. If it was all the way up here, it would still be closest to this vertex. If I want to find the plane of one of these lines, I cross product the vector that's orthogonal to the plane with the vector that's at a right angle into one of the edges. That'll give me ABC values to this line right here, except turned into a plane. So if the point were right here, we wouldn't have to check these two lines over here, these two lines over here, these two lines over here. We'd know it was on this edge right here, so all we'd have to do is check these two lines. If it was off to the side over here, we'd have to check both these two lines as well as these two lines. So whichever edges it's outside of, we have to check the perpendicular lines as well. So I've added this trapezoid to the code so I can test this, this trapezoid here. And this function looks a little different now. For this quadrilateral here, it's inside AB, it's inside BC, it's inside CD, and it's only outside DA. So we should end up with true, 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 false which is what we see. So now check type is an either or. If it's zero, it still does the same thing, point plane. But if the point is outside the polygon, we have to do individual checks on each edge. So we iterate through the edges to find where the point is outside the polygon. That's the case on the very last edge here. We cross some vectors together to get a plane. And since the plane is the same and it's only its position that's changed, I created this function find D, which would just put the plane at a given point. And so you can see what that looks like. It's just the final step of the cross with point function, which that gives us the plane, which you can then see what that looks like, its equation, as well as graphing it itself. So this ends up being the bounds that we're checking on. And it, you know, you can see that P is inside these bounds. And you'll see as well that this plane was made by the line that's orthogonal to the polygon, right? Because it goes up, as well as the line that's orthogonal to AD that's within the polygon's plane. So we check if it's bounded, it should come up true here, which it does. Since I'm using the same plane, the equation returns true if it's on this side of the plane and false if it's on this side of the plane. So when I switch to the other side like this, I now want to switch true and false. So that's why this j equals zero is here, because that'll make the bounds switch sides. And so we do that comparison, it should end up being true. And so as a result, we can tell that p is bounded. So as a result, we find the distance between a point and a line. And if it wasn't bounded, then it would be closest to a vertex. But now, I still don't know how a triangle would work, so I kind of want to see what would happen. So let me just make C the same as B, move it down there. Basically a triangle. You know what, let me move P over to here. B, C, the poly edge back here, should be zero, zero, zero. Everything is zeros, and you can't do a comparison on that. I think I just want to take that point out. Can I do a, a triangle check? So I created this triangle check here. Essentially the way that it works is if two consecutive points are the same, it skips the next point. So that way it's not included. And I've got these new variables, effective X, effective Y, effective Z. So when computing the plane, instead of doing that whole point, same thing, we just use the effective X and effective Y and effective Z. And same thing for the calc min dist. And that triangle check is just called before the computing the plane. And so we get equations of the triangles on all the walls. So now we continue the same two checks. I should see a plane that's perpendicular to AB that's at either A or B. I'm not sure which point. And okay, yeah, that's what we see. We see a plane that's at B. And also this should end up being false because it's not within A and B. It's not bound because P is to the left of it. 
Uh, is that what we see? Is it not bounded? Is bounded going to be false? Good. And then we're going to be checking BD. C doesn't exist here. So what equation do we get here? We get a line that's going out from D like so, and it's perpendicular to BD. In this case, we should end up that it's true because the triangle is this way. So bounded should stay true. And then we get the other line. There's our other plane. It's a parallel plane, but now it's at B, but it's not bound between those. So bound should be false. So it's not on one of the sides because it's not bounded by either A, B, or B, D. So therefore it's closest to one of the vertices, in this case, B. We check P, B. We get 235. This dot min dist afterward is 235. Good. So triangles work. All quadrilaterals work. But the game still won't work. So that's the triangle that I was just drawing. I mean, it looks fine. I mean, nothing works, obviously, because there's other problems. So the never-ending stream of complex 3D math problems continues.